do subscribe to ekeda channel and press bell icon to get updates about latest engineering hsc and iit je main and advanced videos hello friends in this video we are going to study about the instrument pulse generator in this video we will study the working block diagram construction and the characteristics of pulse generator so let us start with our topic pulse generator are the instruments which are used in the electronics and electrical laboratories for the generation of pulses normally the rectangular pulses so wherever we require the rectangular pulses to be used in the electrical circuits we are going to use the pulse generator as the electronic instrument now the application of the pulse generator is that because they are used to generate the rectangular pulses so they are basically used as the test equipments wherever we want to develop the logic circuits for of various forms so as they are used for the generation of rectangular pulses so they are used to stimulate the logic circuits whenever we are developing the logic circuits for various forms so we can use the pulse generators as the test equipment now these pulse generators they are also used along with the oscilloscope that is cathode ray oscilloscopes as a measuring device now we are using the pulse generator as the test instruments so uh, if we are using them along with the oscilloscope so pulse generator they are going to display the waveform either at the output or at some specific point in the circuit wherever we are using them as the test equipment so either they will display us the output waveform or they are going to give us the signal output signal at some specific points in the circuit so if we want to analyze that waveform that pulse it can be done with the help of the pulse generator now this waveform it is displayed either at the output or at some specific points in the system under test so if we want any of the qualitative or quantitative analysis of this waveform then by doing that we can find out the characteristics of the system which is under test or the device which is under test that is why these pulse generator they are used as the test instruments in the electronics laboratory
Now, not only the pulse generator, but also the function generator and other waveform generators, they are also used to generate the different type of waveforms in the laboratories. But the, like the function generator, it is giving us the output waveform like a, a triangular waveform, a square waveform, a sinusoidal waveform. We are given by a function generator. But pulse generator, is it is giving us only the rectangular pulses. Now, as some of the functions of the function generator and other waveform uh, generators they are similar to the pulse generator so pulse generator is also having the capabilities of a function generator making them a multi-purpose equipment okay so pulse generator they can be used in a wide variety of applications wherever we are requiring the use of the rectangular pulses or wherever we want to use them as the test equipments okay now as i have said that the pulse generator they are used to generate the rectangular pulses so there are also another type of generators which are called the square wave generators which generate the square wave so pulse generator and square wave generator there is a very slight difference between the two pulse generator is generating the rectangular pulse So if we see that how a pulse look like it will be it will be like this we are having a rectangular pulse here now if we talk about the square wave it will be It will be like this now you can see that in the rectangular pulse we are not having this period as equal but in the square wave if we calculate the average value here this is the average value and this is the peak value this is the average value in the square wave and this is the peak value so average value is equal to half of the peak value in the case of square wave but that will not be the case in the case of rectangular pulse okay because in rectangular pulse we are having different on and off periods this is the on period and this is the off period okay in the on period we are having a pulse in the off period no pulse is generated so we can see that in this pulse generator we are having the different on and off periods but here we are having the equal on and off periods in this okay also the average value is equals to half of the peak value now if we define a term called the duty cycle which is the ratio of the average value divided by the peak value so in the case of square wave the duty cycle will come out to be 0.5 because average value is half of peak value and uh, divided by peak value so we are getting duty cycle as half or we can say 0.5 whereas in pulse generator we are having different duty cycles depending upon the pulse width okay so here if we calculate this is our peak value so average value will be equals to if we take the time period okay time period is this capital T and small t is the pulse width so if we take another formula for this duty cycle, duty cycle will be equal to the pulse width divided by the P 
पीरियड ओके सो पल्स विथ इज वॉट स्मॉल टी एंड पीरियड इज वॉट कैपिटल टी सो ड्यूटी साइकिल विल कम आउट टू बी स्मॉल टी अपॉन कैपिटल टी फॉर द पल्स जनरेटर्स ओके सो दैट इज द डिफरेंस बिटवीन अ पल्स जनरेटर विच इज जनरेटिंग अ रेक्टेंगुलर पल्स विच इज हैविंग अ डिफरेंट ड्यूटी साइकिल वेर एज अ स्क्वेयर वेव जनरेटर इट जनरेट्स अ स्क्वेयर वेव इन विच द ड्यूटी साइकिल इज जीरो पॉइंट फाइव फॉर द square wave but otherwise the functioning of both these generators will be equal their applications will be same now let us come to the characteristics of a pulse here we have seen that the pulse generator is giving us a rectangular pulse so what are the different characteristics or terminology related with the pulse with a pulse so let's start with the characteristics of pulse rectangular pulse here we are shown a pulse in this and in this pulse we are having different characteristics shown here marked here so let us start with the first characteristic which is called the baseline baseline is referred uh, to as the dc level okay means it is the reference line and it is the line by uh, through which this pulse is starting and it is finishing so the line from where the pulse is starting and the line at which the pulse is finishing is called the baseline okay so in the diagram you can see that the base line is shown here okay and the pulse is starting from this line and also it is finishing at this line okay now this base line it can be a zero uh, line okay it can be a zero value line also but if it is not zero value line and it this base line is shifted from the zero value then that shift is called the base line drift so this offset or this shift of this line from the zero volts line is called the baseline offset okay now next characteristic is the amplitude now amplitude of the pulse is measured from the baseline so the maximum deviation of the pulse from the baseline it will be the amplitude so if in this waveform we see that this is our baseline and this is the changes anywhere if we want to measure the amplitude so suppose at this time we want to measure the amplitude of the pulse so this will be measured from the baseline this is the baseline okay so this value uh, that is the amplitude of the pulse uh, this steady state value from the baseline will be the amplitude of the pulse
pulse rise time is defined as the time taken by the pulse to go from the 10% value to the 90% of its amplitude. So it, it is the 10% line. Okay, so from this 10% line to the 90% line, whatever time the pulse has taken, that is called the rise time. So here it is shown the first transition rise time, the time taken by the pulse to go from the 10% value to the 90% value. Similarly, fall time is defined as the time taken by the pulse to decrease from the 90% value to the 10% value so this time is called the fall time okay and this time is called the rise time So in the rise time, you can see that it is the rising edge, okay, and this is the trailing edge. Rising edge means when the pulse is going from the 10% to the 90% value, so that is called the rising edge. And when it is falling from the 90% value to the 10% value, that is called the trailing edge okay rising edge or also it is known as the leading edge okay so here fall time is defined as the time for the trailing edge to go from the 90 percent to the 10 percent of its amplitude next characteristic is linearity So between this 10% to 90% value, if a straight line is drawn, okay, so linearity is defined as the deviation of an edge from the straight line which is drawn between the 10% to 90% values and this is expressed as the percentage of the pulse amplitude. So that is the linearity. Linearity is the defined as the straight line. So when if we are having suppose uh, Suppose that this is our baseline, we are having the pulse over here. Okay, now the time taken from 10% to the 90% value here, we are having a slope over here. But if we draw a straight line between this, So if any deviation is there, suppose this is the straight line and this is how the pulse is going. So that deviation from the straight line between the 10% to the 90% value, it is called the linearity. Suppose here that when the pulse is starting, if the pulse is having any deviation in reaching the baseline, here it is reaching the baseline to the start of the pulse. Suppose that here we are having the baseline. Now when the pulse is starting, suppose from this position the pulse is starting in this way. 
Now this pulse is having some deviation from the baseline before the starting of the pulse. It is somewhat deviated from the baseline. So that is called the pre-shoot. Okay. Next is ringing. Before that, we have to explain that what is overshoot. So it will be easy for us to see that, uh, easy to understand about the ringing. Overshoot, we can say that it is the maximum height which is immediately followed up following the leading edge. Here we are having the leading edge of the pulse. So the maximum height which this pulse has attained that is called the overshoot. Now here this is our 100% line. Okay. So this is the maximum value uh, or the 100% value of our pulse or our per input. Now if this pulse has exceeded this value. So this is called the overshoot. Now what about ringing? Ringing is the positive and negative peak distortion. Now here in the ringing we have to exclude the overshoot. Okay. So this was the overshoot. Now this was the maximum height. Now uh, uh, other than this if any uh, deviation is there from this 100% value. So that will be called the ringing. So here we are having ringing. This is the positive distortion. If in the negative side also we are having distortion. So that is called the uh, that is also called the ringing. So it is other than the overshoot if we are having any distortion or any deviation from the 100% value of the input then that will be the ringing. So settling time is defined as the period which is taken by the pulse ringing to be within a specified percentage of the pulse amplitude. Suppose we want that we have to reach uh, the time taken by the pulse to reach the 5% value of the pulse amplitude. So that will be called the settling time. So that period is calculated from the 90% value. Okay, it is calculated from that point. 90% of the leading edge after that if whatever time means 5% of the total value 2% 4% so within that range the time taken by the pulse will be the settling time or we can say that in a simple language that the time taken to settle within that specified value will be the settling time. Next characteristics is pulse droop. So pulse droop is defined as the fall in the pulse amplitude with the time. You can see that here the pulse is first increasing then decreasing again it is increasing decreasing again it is increasing. Now after that uh, last increase in the pulse amplitude this pulse start decreasing in with the time. So this fall in the amplitude with the time is called the droop. Okay. Now at the leading and the for, uh, trailing edge. Now rounding is defined as the curvature of the pulse at the leading and the trailing edge. 
so in this waveform if we see that uh, this is the leading edge of the pulse now at this leading edge if the pulse is somewhat uh, is uh, slightly curved in that suppose that here this is the baseline This is the 100% reference value. Now when the pulse is like this, so at this leading edge, the curvature in the leading and the falling edge means at the trailing edge. This curvature is called the rounding. Okay. So droop is the deviation. It is the deviation in the... Uh, fall in the pulse amplitude when uh, with the time and rounding is the curvature at the leading and the trailing edge okay next characteristic is the pulse width now pulse width it is measured in units of time And it is the time between the 50% points on the leading and the trailing edges. So suppose that this is our waveform. Now this is the 50% point on the leading edge and this is the 50% point on the trailing edge. So the time period between this is called the pulse duration or we can say the pulse width. So pulse width is defined as the time between the 50% points on the leading and the trailing edges. Similarly, we are having the another characteristic which is called the pulse period. Now pulse period is again it is measured in unit of time and it is the time between the equal points on the waveform. Okay, suppose that we are having a waveform in which we are having different pulses and the pulses are repeating itself. So on these pulses, if we are taking the same points, so the time between these equal points is called the pulse period. Okay, so suppose that here we are having a pulse. Now again our pulse is starting from this point. So the time period between these two equal points on the waveform will be the pulse period. Next characteristic is the pulse repetition rate. Pulse repetition rate, it determines that how frequently the pulse is repeating itself or we can say that it is the frequency of the pulse. So this pulse repetition rate, it is the reciprocal of the pulse period just like frequency is the reciprocal of the time period. So here pulse repetition rate, it is the reciprocal of the pulse period or we can say it, it, it is the frequency of the pulse that how frequently the pulse is occurring in the waveform. Next characteristic is duty cycle. This term we have already used in our video that duty cycle is defined as the ratio of the pulse width to the pulse period. And it is usually expressed as the percentage value. Okay. In percentage the duty cycle is represented. Next characteristic is pulse jitter.
so pulse jitter is this uh, measure of the short term instability of one event with respect to another for example the instability in the starting time or in the pulse width or pulse amplitude okay so it is usually expressed as the percentage of the main parameter that in what terms we are defining the instability like if we want to find out the instability in the rise time okay instability in the rise time with respect to the amplitude of the pulse so here it is the short term instability of one event with respect to another and it is expressed as the percentage of the main parameter so these are the few characteristics or we can say the basic terms used with the pulse now let's come to the block diagram of the pulse generator that how a pulse is generated in the electronic and electrical laboratories with the help of the pulse generator Now, if we see the block diagram of the pulse generator, it will be like this. In this, we are having different components. You can see we are having a frequency control. Different controls are there and these controls are on the front panel of the instrument. On the instrument, we see certain knobs and these knobs are used to... Uh, adjust certain parameters of the instrument so in this uh, inside the instrument we are having the different controls and for these controls on the front panel we are having different knobs so here we are having the controls like frequency control is there then vernier amplitude control is there symmetry control is there so these controls are provided on the front panel of the instrument other components are like we are having an upper current source switching circuit lower current source ramp capacitor is there multiplier is there shimmer trigger sync circuit this is the main circuit which is producing the pulse uh, here then we are having on the output there are two types of output 600 ohm output is there and 50 ohm output is there for these outputs we are having an output amplifier is there for vernier and amplitude we are having uh, different amplifiers and attenuators then for the trigger output we are having the triggers output circuit and trigger polarity so these are the different components of the pulse generator this is the basic block diagram let us see that how this uh, what are the functions of each of these blocks and how the pulse generator is generating the pulse or working of the pulse generator Now here first starting from this left side we are having a frequency control which is controlling the frequency of this pulse generator. Now this frequency controller it is it can cover the frequency in seven decade steps uh, between the range 1 hertz to 10 megahertz. So 1 hertz to 10 megahertz frequency range it is divided in seven decade steps each step it is of 100 hertz frequency and this frequency can be adjusted with the help of a linearly calibrated dial and it can do the adjustment for all of these ranges so 1 hertz to 10 megahertz divided into seven decade steps each step having 100 range of frequency 100 hertz frequency range and it can be adjusted with the help of a linearly calibrated dial and uh, on the front panel we are having a frequency control with the help of that knob we are adjusting the the frequency in the circuit.
Now the duty cycle of the rectangular pulse which is generated by the circuit, the duty cycle can also be varied from 25% to 75%. We have seen earlier that uh, the duty cycle for a squared wave it is 0.5 or we can say 50% duty cycle is there. So uh, in the pulse generator different duty cycles are there and these duty cycle can be varied from 25% value to 75%. 75% of value. Now in this pulse generator as we have seen in the block diagram that there are two independent outputs. A 50 ohm output is there and a 600 ohm output is there. Now two outputs are given so that we can have different rise and fall times in the pulse. We have discussed in the pulse characteristics that the rise time and fall time of a pulse are defined. So if we want that uh, the rise time and fall time of the pulse are different then we can do that we can get a different rise time and fall time with the help of these two outputs. So here we are having two independent outputs. One is 600 ohm and second is 50 ohm. So at the 600 ohm source, it gives us the rise time and pulse time. The rise time and the pulse time are 70 nanoseconds at 30 volts peak amplitude whereas at the 50 ohm output we are having 5 nanoseconds as the rise time and fall time of the pulse at 5 volts peak amplitude So you can see that the rectangular pulse which we are getting at the output we are having different rise time and fall time for that. At the 50 ohm output we are having lower value for the rise time and fall time which is 5 nanoseconds only at the 5 voltage of peak amplitude means the peak value the maximum value of the amplitude which we are getting is the 5 volt. Now in the 600 ohm output the range is increased that rise time and fall time is 70 nanoseconds and the peak amplitude is 30 volts. Now this pulse generator it can be used as a free running generator also or it can be synchronized with the external signals also. So if we are having uh, the external signals and we want to synchronize them with this generator we are having the sync circuit here. This sync circuit is provided to the shimmit trigger and shimmit trigger is uh, connected to the switching circuit. So if this sync synchronization circuit is not used it will act as a free running generator if this synchronization circuit is used then external signals can be used to trigger this pulse generator okay so if internally it is working then it's a free running generator if external signals are used then it will act in the synchronization mode so for synchronization the trigger output pulses are also available you can see here that we are having the trigger output also here which is given here okay and here we are having the synchronization input for providing the external signals to the generator now here the basic generating loop which is generating the pulse, the rectangular pulse, it is it consists of the two current sources, the upper current source and the lower current source. Then it consists of the shimmit trigger, switching circuit and the ramp capacitor. So this is the main 
generating loop which is generating the rectangular pulses for the instrument so if we redraw this part this generating loop it will be like So this is the main uh, generating loop which is the basic generating loop consisting of the current source 1 and the current source 2. There are two current sources. Then we are having a shimmer trigger. Then a ramp capacitor is there. Also there is a current switching circuit which is indicated by a simple switch here. Now the two current sources they will be providing the two currents I1 and I2. This will provide the current I1 and this is the reverse current I2. Okay. So these two current sources they provide the constant currents for the charging and discharging of this ram capacitor. I1 is going to charge this capacitor and this capacitor is going to discharge through this reverse current I2. So these current sources are responsible for the charging and discharging of this ram capacitor. Now on this uh, block diagram we are having the symmetry control here symmetry control is attached with the lower current source and the upper current source so the ratio of the two currents i1 provided by the upper current source and i2 provided by the lower current source so the ratio of these two currents it is determined by the setting of this symmetry control okay which then determines the duty cycle of the output waveform so here we are having this symmetry control which determines the ratio of the two currents which then determines the duty cycle of the output waveform now other than symmetry control we are having a frequency dial also Okay, here you can see that we are having the frequency dial also which is connected with the upper current source and lower current source. So the sum of these two currents from the current sources, they are also adjusted by this frequency dial. Now we are having a multiplier also here. So this multiplier, it is going to select the size of this ramp capacitor. okay so here these last two controls the frequency dial and the multiplier they are going to provide the decade switching and the vernier control of the frequency of the output here you can see that we are having the vernier control over here then we are having frequency control symmetry control and multiplier control so the function of all these controls is to just control the magnitude of this lower and the upper current source so that the output waveform which is generated by this circuit the, the characteristics of that output waveform can be modified okay
Now, if we come to the working of this upper current source and the lower current source, this upper current source is supplying a constant current to this ramp capacitor and uh, due to this, uh, the ramp capacitor will be charged at a constant rate. So when this upper current source, it is providing the constant current to the ramp capacitor and it is charging the capacitor. So due to the charging of the capacitor ramp voltage, it is going to increase linearly. Now when this ramp voltage is increasing and it has achieved a predetermined level. So at that time, the shimmer trigger here, the shimmer trigger is connected. So this shimmer trigger is going to change its, its state. So this switch is will come to this position okay now when this um, positive going ramp it has attained that level at that time shimmer trigger has changed its state and now the reverse current through this current source 2 it starts flowing due to this reverse current the capacitor it starts discharging and the ramp which was increasing linearly it starts decreasing linearly okay again it will come to some predetermined level after it has attained that level again the shimmer trigger is going to change its state and the switch will again come to the first position again charging of the capacitor will be done again the ramp voltage starts increasing linearly so in this way the cycle is repeated so here ramp voltage increases linearly when it reaches the upper limit so the trigger output it now goes negative and it is going to reverse the current control and now the reverse current I2 from the second current source it starts flowing. Now the discharging rate it is controlled by the lower current source which is providing the current I2. Now when this negative ramp, because earlier the ramp voltage was increasing linearly with time, now it is going to decrease linearly with time. So that is called the negative ramp. Now when this negative ramp reaches a predetermined level, okay so it again comes back to its original state and again the current source one will be connected to the uh, ramp capacitor again the capacitor starts charging and the cycle is going to repeat itself now if we represent this whole phenomena with the help of the waveform
so this is the capacitor voltage the current from the current source one so this is the current i1 you can see that during the time t1 this current i1 is provided so the capacitor it starts uh, it starts charging and the capacitor voltage it starts increasing linearly with the time it has attained the voltage value e okay after that the current source 2 will be activated and the reverse current will be provided i1 current will not be provided i2 will start flowing okay so due to this i2 current the capacitor it starts discharging and it will discharge when it's uh, up till its value becomes zero again i1 is provided again the charging is started so this same cycle is being repeated again and again so you can see that here we are getting the capacitor voltage and the value of this capacitor voltage is maximum value is e now this is the time period t so this time period t is calculated by the value of the capacitor ce okay then 1 upon i1 plus 1 upon i2 the two currents from the current sources 1 and 2 so this is how the output waveform from the capacitor it changes when the current from the i1 and i2 uh, uh, current sources they have changed now as this uh, again when this capacitor has uh, changed its value so in this way the whole process is being repeated first the capacitor is charged then it is discharged again charging is done and the shimmer trigger at each stage it is changes in its state now the output of this shimmer trigger it is passed to the trigger output you can see in the block diagram that the output of the shimmer trigger is provided to the trigger output circuit and to the 50 ohm output also and to the 600 ohm output also so this same output is being given to three other outputs now here at the 600 output we are having an output amplifier here also we are having an output amplifier so the output coming out from the shimmer trigger it is first amplified So the output of the shimmer trigger is applied to the trigger output circuit to the amplifiers of the 50 ohm and the 600 ohm outputs. Now what the trigger output circuit does, it differentiates the square wave output from the shimmer trigger and it is going to invert the resulting pulse and it provides us a positive going pulse, positive triggering pulses provided by that. Okay. So here we are giving this to the trigger output circuit here we are having the trigger polarity so polarity means a negative triggering pulse will be converted into a positive triggering pulse and then it is provided to the trigger output okay now this 50 ohm output and 600 ohm output you can see that 50 ohm output we are having two controls vernier control and the amplitude control so these controls are provided on the waveform on the output waveform its amplitude is changed and any attenuations can be done with the pulse
So the 50 ohm output it is provided with the output attenuator and the vernier controls of the signal output voltage. With the 600 ohm output we are having only the amplifier. Now if we want that uh, uh, this function, this pulse generator it not only act as the free running generator but as uh, say it is also synchronized with the external circuits. So we can use this external synchronization circuit also. Now this whole circuit is provided with an internal power supply which is providing the voltages to all the stages of the instrument. So this was the complete block diagram description of the pulse shunt data. We have seen it's working also with the help of this block diagram that how a pulse is generated by this generating loop and what is the functions of the other blocks in this block diagram. So this was about the working and construction of block diagram. If we talk about this application, we have already studied that pulse generator is used to generate the rectangular pulses and it is also used with an oscilloscope, cathode ray oscilloscope as a measurement device. If we want to measure the amplitude and the rise time, fall time, time period of the pulses, we can do that with the help of the pulse generator. So in this video, we studied about the pulse generator, what is its use, what are its applications, its working principle and uh, how its uh, block diagram. We also studied that what are the functions of the various blocks in that. So I hope that this topic pulse generator, it is now clear to you. Thank you.